Hi, I know I've had some issues with sound, so I'm wearing this goofy contraption, which makes me look even more bald than I am. Uh, but hopefully this will help. So we're going to try to round out some vocabulary that's right in the very beginning of the book. We've been skipping around a little bit because of the first two weeks, and I wanted to make sure I can revisit some vocabulary we've done and introduce some uh, that we haven't really touched on. So first of all, beginning of most uh, geometry books, there's something called undefined terms, which always drives me a little crazy because they're clearly defined. Uh, I think they're called undefined because everything else is kind of built off them, uh, and they're a little vague in exactly what they are, but we all kind of agree that a point is typically a dot which uh, doesn't have any width or height or anything it's like infinitesimally small it's usually done with a capital letter we have a line which is uh, infinitely thin but goes on in both directions forever and is usually indicated with a lowercase uh, letter often in cursive um, or with uh, two points on the line and we write it often that way CD with arrows in both directions or DC would work too and then finally, we one we haven't talked about yet is a plane. Now, plane literally is almost like if you think of an infinitely thin sheet of paper, uh, that's really a plane. But in most books, they draw it like this to kind of give you a, a 3D feel because really when we talk about plane, we need to start thinking about three dimensions instead of two dimensions because we want to talk about what's not on the plane. Um, a plane is often... Um, indicated with a large uppercase in cursive in a lot of books. Uh, it can also be defined by three points, so I could call this plane EFG, um, or I could sometimes defined by two lines, I could say it's the line, uh, the plane containing lines uh, K and M. Uh, so plane, line, and point are undefined terms, although they really are defined. Uh, you'll find the definitions uh, at like the first page of the book. Um, segment. Segment is simply a portion of a line. Line goes on forever. Segment has a beginning and an end, so it has some length. Um, the endpoints, these are called endpoints. Uh, so I can call this AB, notice no arrows over the top, or BA, no arrows. Once again, doesn't matter which one comes first. And um, there's also a ray. A ray has an endpoint, but then goes through another point on forever. So this one can be called CD or EF. Uh, it's not necessarily alphabetical. That's just my example. What it cannot be, this is one of the few exceptions, this cannot be DC or FE because that's not where it starts. It starts at C, goes through D, starts at E, goes through F. So that is the one place you can definitely make a mistake. And then a little bit of review. I'm going to talk about angles because those had rays in them, but I'm not sure if we really called them as rays, and I'm having a little trouble. There we go. Um, this is angle GHI or angle IHJ, either way you want to call it. And uh, there's a ray HI there, there's a ray HG, those come together at a common endpoint. And let me get this over here. There we go. So the degrees. So a little reminder degrees are a little weird. Uh, they typically go from 0 to 360s, usually about the maximum that we have. Uh, it's not like degrees uh, to temperature. And this one right here is probably about 45 degrees. A right angle is typically 90 degrees. A straight line uh, we say is um, 180 degrees. So usually a lot of our answers are between 0 and 180. And then we have terms to talk about, ones that are less than 90, which we call acute, which, oh, and I'm, I'm too close. Sorry. Acute, which is uh, acute little angle, or obtuse which uh, kind of looks like obese, so it's a big angle, more than 90 degrees. Oftentimes we classify angles as being smaller or acute angles or being larger, obtuse angles. Uh, and then if it's more than 180 degrees, some books will call them reflex angles. I don't want to get into those. All right, hopefully that's good. Sorry that's a little off. I'm doing this at an angle, and I'm doing this uh, not on the screen because I think my uh, it's a little easier, especially for what's about to happen couple of other vocabulary words, and I'm almost done, actually. Uh, notice pilot, copilot, my great little drawing here, because they're both piloting together. Collinear and coplanar means in the same line and in the same plane. Um, notice A, A and B are collinear. Now, this is a little tricky. A, B and C are also collinear. That's my little dots there. A and C are also collinear. Two dots are always collinear because you can always create a line between them. But what's not collinear is A, B, and C together. As a group, they're not collinear. If C was on the line, then A, C, and B could all be collinear, but C is clearly not on the line. So collinear are any points which are on the same line. They've got to line up. In the same way, coplanar. Now, this is where it gets a little weird. 
Uh, three points will always be coplanar because I can always put a sheet of paper three. It's like a tabletop. If I've got if I've got three points, let me do this. I can always balance something on them. Those three will make a tabletop. When I add a fourth point, maybe it fits on a tabletop or maybe it's up in space somewhere, like a wobbly chair almost. Uh, in the same way, F, E, and Z here, I could make a plane that would fit there, but based on my picture, you can kind of see, oh, F, E, H, and G are all supposed to be in the same plane. They're all coplanar and Z is not, it's off the plane relative to those points. Uh, the one weird thing about coplanar is it's spelled with an A there, stupid English language, uh, but it almost looks like the word that it represents. Okay, so that's coplanar. And finally, I'm almost done. Uh, we're going to revisit the idea of postulates. So a postulate or an axiom is something that we are told is true and it's a building block. So one of the very first postulates in most geometry books is if two points exist, then there is exactly one line through them. Okay, so if I've got points, only one way to do it. What I can't do is this. I can't have some point CD and have a line here and some other line, which I guess could be a curved line, but we typically say they're straight lines. This doesn't exist, not in Euclidean geometry. There are other geometries where this actually is legal, but not in our geometry. Okay, uh, finally, we've talked about converses. Now, I don't know if this is exactly a converse. This is worded kind of strangely. So for me to flip out around the conclusion and the given or hypothesis up there, I can't quite get it right because of the way the English works, but I think this is roughly the converse. If a line exists, there is exactly two points on it. Now this is a converse. It doesn't have to be true just because the postulate is true. So think about that. Is that true? That's going to be my last question. Ciao.